Hello all Royal Rangers, my name is Commander Matthew Kenslow and I'm over here in the United States of America and I've been a Royal Ranger for 20 years and year number 7 as a commander. Thank you so much for checking out this video. The purpose of this video is to go over a merit. In these videos I'm going to walk through every one of the requirements. Now it's important to note that while watching these videos it will not give you the merit. You have to show to your commander that you have watched and learned from these videos. What I recommend you doing is taking down notes for each requirement and then show them to your commander for approval. Some of the purposes of Royal Rangers is to build knowledge, wisdom, skills, and leadership attributes while learning about God's Word and conserving His resources practically and most importantly to have fun doing it. So I'm Commander Matthew Kenslow from the United States of America and be blessed. Hi everybody, welcome to the fun and melodious music merit. Let's begin with requirement one. On at least three different occasions, sing as a soloist or a member of a group, such as a quartet or a choir, or play a musical instrument as a soloist or member of a group, such as a band or orchestra. So if you sang by yourself or with others, or if you played a musical instrument by yourself or with others at least three uh, different times, then go ahead and tell your commander and he should uh, sign you off on that part of the merit on requirement one. Requirement two says name each note on a scale and show where it should appear on the staff. So I found this video on YouTube and it uh, takes you from the low C right here and goes all the way to a high C right here with the middle C right here in the middle. Uh, this is the grand staff. It has the treble clef and the bass clef uh, together, which I'll get to uh, here momentarily. But let's take a listen uh, from uh, this note all the way up here to that note. All of these notes that you see here on the grand staff correspond to a note on the piano. The notes range from A to G and then it starts back over to A and it continues. On an actual piano with 88 keys, it goes all the way from low A to the highest C. There are instruments that only play the low sound like bass, cello, um, and certain uh, brass instruments and then there are certain instruments that play the very high sounds uh, such as the flute for example but a piano could play low high and all in between okay so now I want to talk about where notes appear on the staff the symbol right here says that we're talking about the treble clef uh, the plural for staff is staves just to say so you have line notes notes that um, go over a line and there are five of them and then you have space notes in which there are four of them Let's start with the line notes The notes here are E G B D and F a mnemonic uh, that a lot of people learn including me is Every good boy does fine Another mnemonic is every good boy deserves fudge that's another way to uh, to remember E, G, B, D, F. Down here, the notes are F, A, C, E, which you could just remember face. That's what, how I always uh, remembered. And these go in order because if you look down here, we have line one, then space one, line two, then space two. And on the piano, if all the notes go in alphabetical order from A to G, you could expect that since this is E, the next one, the space here is an F, and it is, then G, A, B, C, D, E, F. Now let's talk about the bass clef. 
So this symbol right here says that uh, we're dealing with a different clef, the bass clef, and we'll talk about the difference uh, between the treble clef and the bass clef in an upcoming requirement. But these notes correspond to different letters. Okay, we have G, B, D, F, and A. The mnemonic for that is good boys do fine always. Now let's look at the space notes. Ace G, A C E G, or Ace G. Or if you don't want to remember Ace G, you could always remember all cows eat grass. So these are the notes of the bass clef. Uh, it basically went down by two. So instead of this being a B, the B went down uh, two steps. One, two. Now this is a D in the bass clef. Now I want to talk about something extra real quick called ledger lines. Obviously there are notes that go uh, below E and beyond F. How do we account for that? Well we just continue going. This is the treble clef so the middle line is what? It's B. So you got B, C, D, E, F. Okay if we were to continue the first space above F would be G then the next line would be A, then B, C, D, E. And likewise if we're going down in pitch. Okay, requirement three. Draw the following music symbols and explain what each one means. Okay, as we said before, this is the treble clef. This means that you play the middle and upper octaves. And I'll explain what octave is here shortly. Then we have a bass clef, which means that we play the lower octaves, that is, the bass notes. So the bass notes are down here. These are the low pitch notes. And the treble clef is in the middle and the upper pitch notes. Now, an octave is, well, do you see how right here where the laser pointer is? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then it starts over and it repeats those uh, seven letters over and over again. Well, from this A to that A is an octave up. From this A down to that A is an octave down. The word octave has the prefix oct, like octagon, octopus, October. It means eight. So we have eight notes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight, where it starts over at A. From this C to that C is an octave. And some musicians, uh, piano players, um, like in my case, um, I sometimes go down an octave and play the melody, and sometimes I go up an, an octave and play the melody. Okay, so let's continue. DC Alfine, which stands for De Capo Alfine. This is pronounced fine, not fine. And here's what it means. De Capo means from the beginning or from the head in Italian, and fine means end. So what this means is go back to the beginning and play to fine. Here's an example. So you start right here, the beginning of the song, and you start to play all the way until you reach where it says DC al fine. Okay, DC, de capo, from the beginning. Okay, so that tells you to go all the way back to the beginning and begin to play. You stop until you reach fine, and you're done with the piece. It's that simple. Now let's do something a little bit extra because I can't help it, and you'll probably run into this if you're interested in uh, being a musician. Dis S al fine, which stands for del segno al fine. Del segno means from the sign in Italian. That means go back to the sign and play to the fine. What sign is it talking about? Well, it's this symbol right here. That's uh, the sign, or segno. So it means that when you start here, you play all the way until you reach dies al fine. Okay, this tells you to go back to where you see the sign. So if it was dc al fine, you would go all the way back to the beginning. But now since it's ds al fine, you start here, and you go until you see fine, and then you're done with the piece. 
Now you have something called DC Alcoda or Decapo Alcoda. You could probably infer that you have to go to the beginning, but what's coda? Coda is this sign right here. Sometimes the coda, which is this block right here, sometimes it's attached, like in this case, or other times it's detached and at the bottom of the piece. Uh, but this means coda right here. It usually says coda right there. So this means go back to the beginning and play to coda, then you play the coda. So you're starting right here, you play all of this until you reach the DC Alcoda. This tells you to go all the way back to the beginning and play until you see the coda sign, which is right here. So you stop right here and you skip all the way to where the coda is, then you play the coda and you're done. Finally, DS Alcoda, Del Segno Alcoda, uh, which just basically means that you go to the sign instead of the beginning. So you play all of this, okay, DS Alcoda, that means you go back to the sign. You play this until you reach the coda sign, and then you skip all the way to the coda, play that, and then you're done. Okay, so crescendo means that you're gradually increasing in volume. You're going from soft to loud if you're reading left to right, like in a book or a sheet of music. Decrescendo is just the opposite, where you gradually decrease in volume. Fermata means that you hold the note longer than the value shown. Now, um, this merit doesn't really go heavily into the values of notes. For instance, this is a quarter note. Quarter note um, gets uh, one beat per measure. Um, but just know in a fermata, this means that you hold the note as long as you want. So imagine you're hearing a song, let's say the Star Spangled Banner, and it gets to the point where they just, you know, hold the note for a very long period of time. Um, however long that they want. That is essentially what a fermata is. A sharp means that you go up a half step. So that's the symbol right here. For example, let's say like if you're in the key of D or the key of G, for example, and it tells you to play an F, well, in those keys, you have to go up a half step and play an F sharp. When you skip a note like that, this is going up a whole step otherwise it would be a half step okay so if you're playing a C sharp you go up a half step and you're at C sharp and so that's what it means by sharp contrastingly a flat is where you go down a half step so let's say you're in the key of F where every time you see a B you have to flatten it so B's right here and instead of playing a, a B you have to go down a half step and play the B flat. Now, uh, there's something very interesting. When you play, let's say for example, an F sharp, that's technically a G flat as well. And technically, an E sharp is F, and F flat is E. It, it gets a little um, interesting when you really study music theory. And finally, natural. That just means return the note to the natural value after playing its sharp or flat. Uh, the white keys down here are typically uh, the natural value. Uh, for example, if you're playing uh, an F sharp, that's up here. Okay, but to return it to the natural value means that you go back and play F as normal. Here's an example. This is known as the key signature. It's in the beginning of a piece, unless it's the key of C, then there's no sharps or flats. But other than the key of C, this is the key signature and tells you that every time you see uh, that note, you have to flatten it. So this is the treble clef. Uh, we're actually in the key of F, and this is uh, B, because it's the middle line. And that means every time you see a B, even if it's a B like down here or up here where it's not on the middle line, it's still a B and you flatten it. 
But let's look down here at the bass clef. This is a B uh, according to the bass clef, and you see the natural sign. That means instead of playing B flat right here, you would play B natural. So instead of playing B flat, you would just play B natural. And that's simply what it means. Sometimes you see like the sharp or the flat next to keys. That just means that you're in a special uh, case where you have to go ahead and, and, and just, you know, sharpen it. Okay, requirement four. Explain what level of volume is represented by the following term and draw their symbols. So we're now dealing with dynamics. This is forte. And forte means that you play the music loudly. Mezzo forte means that you play it moderately loud. Mezzo means middle. Then you have mezzo piano, which means that you play the music moderately soft. And then you have uh, piano, which means that you play the music softly. And yes, that's also the name of the instrument. How I understand it, the piano, again, was the first, or at, at least one of the first instruments that could play both loud and soft. And I, I believe that's how, or why they call it uh, the piano. But piano also refers to soft. Now, for something a little extra, you have... You could have a double piano or double forte. These are also known respectively as pianissimo and fortissimo. This means that you play the piano softer than soft or louder than loud. And then you could have a triple piano or triple forte, also known as pianissimo and fortissimo. This is basically a whisper, and this is basically yelling. Now, I'm not making this up. I've seen this on the internet, but there is also a quadruple piano and quadruple forte called pianississimo and fortississimo, which is like lower than a whisper or louder than yelling. So you might possibly in a in 10 blue moon see that, but anyway. <laughs> so requirement five, find an example of each of the following types of notes in your church hymnal. Here's a fun at-home activity that you're going to do. You have to find each of these notes um, in your church hymnal. I'll, I'll explain. You have to find a whole note, half note, quarter note, eighth note, sixteenth note, and either dotted note. So you have a, a dotted half or dotted quarter. Um, according to Royal Rangers, you just need to find either of these. It doesn't matter which one. And again, we're not really going over the timing here. That's probably a bit more advanced in uh, music theory. Uh, but anyway, this is these are examples of a hymnal, um, and unfortunately, they're being uh, getting a little elusive or hard to find. Um, I love hymns. Um, I play hymns um, at my church. I have a whole YouTube playlist if you're interested in that. Uh, but all you have to do is go to six different songs and find one of these per song. So in other words, uh, go to one song, find a whole note, write the title down on a sheet of paper next to whole note. Um, go to another song, find a half note, and write the title down on the sheet of paper and go all the way down. And then show it to your commander. And you should be checked off on that requirement thereafter. Okay, requirement six. Identify ten musical instruments by sound. I have collected several sound bites of different instruments back in 2018 uh, when I was uh, first teaching the music merit. And I'm going to play to you a few seconds or more of each. There's 19 total. Here's the word bank. And what I want you to do is press pause and write all these down. Notice that the clarinet is used twice. And what I want you to do is write down on a sheet of paper 1 through 19. And then when you think that you know the answer, or if you know that you know the answer, then write it down and go all the way 1 through 19.
Okay, so for requirement seven, we're going to go over the appropriate ways to direct an orchestra using appropriate conducting patterns. Okay, so here are the conducting patterns and it's going to be through your perspective. So let's say that you're facing your orchestra that way. If you're right-handed, and yeah, this is not a baton, a conductor's baton, this is just a pencil, but uh, you'll get the idea. For two, four time, go down, away from you, and up, down, away from you and up so you're making like an arc motion like this so it's one two one two one two because there's two beats per measure in a two four time if you're left-handed you go down to the left and up down to the left and up for three four time you go down to the right up down to the right up one two three one two three one two three kind of bit like the waltz is in three four time so that means there's three beats per measure so one two three if you're left-handed it'd be go down to the left up down to the left up so you could imagine a triangle a triangle has three sides so what do you think about four four time when there's four beats per measure it's not going to be a square it's going to be down to the right to the left toward the center of your body and then up down to the right to the left toward the center of your body and up so one two three four one two three four now if you're left-handed it'll be down toward the left and then go to the right toward the center of your body and up. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And those are the basic uh, conducting patterns for two, four, three, four, and four, four time. And once again, here they are. And again, practice these and show them to your commander. Okay, for requirement eight, you have to find three scripture references regarding singing or musical instruments and or musical instruments. So um, here's a great time to introduce what a concordance is. Um, hopefully you already know um, what a concordance is. It's toward the back of the Bible or sometimes you could just buy a huge exhaustive uh, concordance like Strong's for example. And you just basically look up a word, a name, a place, and it will give you all the scripture references uh, to whatever it is that you're looking up. So some key words for you to consider is song or songs, lyre or harp, trumpet, lute, timbrel, sing, singing or singers, music, harmonious, and so much more. These are just suggestions. Uh, so have fun. Uh, write out at least three uh, scripture references and show them to your commander. So congratulations, you did it. Uh, you got through the music merit. Um, all you have to do is just show your commander the notes, uh, do uh, the at-home projects, and congratulations, you got the merit.